Hey everyone, it's Josiah here. I know it's been a while since my last video. Um, I made these slides a while ago and I thought I made a video and I totally didn't. So um, today I'm gonna be talking about dots. This is gonna be a continuation on me talking about functions, which I love and I'll probably come back to in some other capacity soon. So you may have seen these dots and you've interacted with them and you've used them and you might actually intuitively know how they work, but I wanna make that intuition explicit knowledge. Those three little dots, they're quite literally called dots, and they're everywhere in R. You've probably seen them in dplyr select, where we have this argument that says one or more unquoted expressions separated by commas. Variable names can be used as if they were positions in the data frame, so expressions like x through y can be used to select a range of variables. And you've used dots every time you use this function, albeit a special kind of dots called dynamic dots. You've probably also used them in the mutate function, and the documentation for the dots here says name value pairs. The name gives the name of the column and the output. Or you might have also seen them in paste, where the, R, the documentation says one or more R objects to be converted to character vectors. The function paste from base R lets you pass in as many R objects as you would like, and it helps you create nice character strings. Or you might have used the lapply function, where you pass in some object X, you apply a function, and you pass in optional arguments to that function through dots. So what is dot 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 or dots actually doing? Dots helps us pass in arguments. Everything that it does can be distilled into passing arguments. How we do this and in what context we do this can be varied to a fabulous degree. According to advanced R, there are two primary uses of dots. They are to pass in arguments from one function to another, Secondly, which we will not go over in this video, is the use of dots to allow different S3 methods to take different arguments, like the very, 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 very many different predict methods you might have encountered when you're trying to predict on a model. But that's a time for a different video. Let's first look at how we can pass arguments directly into another function using dots. So we start with a function called print dots. It has one argument, dot, dot, dot. To pass the dots directly into another function, you can actually just include them as an argument. R will match the arguments for us like magic. Here we paste together whatever we put into the function. Lacking creativity, say we pass in hello and world. We're gonna get hello world returned to us because those values are being pa passed directly into paste. Let's continue with this example. We can say my favorite letter is, and then pass in the first 10 letters of the alphabet. Now let's maybe take a more realistic example. This way of using dots, when you get it, is super powerful. It's actually underpinning a majority of the functions in my package, sfdep, which is an interface to spdep. So let's take a look at one of those as an example. It's a bunch of code, but we can actually distill this down into like three simple lines. So the arguments x, n, b, w, t are required. The alternative argument is set for us to a default value of two dots sided. And then there are the dots. The reason why we use dots in this case and why it's so powerful is that it lets us take different objects restructure them into the required format, then pass in arguments to another function. SPDEP uses a list W object, which contains two lists, one for identifying neighbors and the second to store the spatial weights for them. And those are respectively NB and WT. NB is for neighbors and WT is for the weights. And in this line, we create a new object, which is that list W object. When we get to this third line, we're passing in this newly created list w object, we're setting the alternative argument, and if any other arguments are passed in via dots, they're sent to spdep. Let's try calling the function as it is with its default arguments using spdep directly. Now compare this to the function that calls spdep but with, but with different arguments, the results are identical. So spdep local g takes additional arguments that aren't handled by sfdep directly, and we can actually try setting one of these arguments via the dots. The local g function has an argument return internals uh, that returns additional data as an attribute. This isn't defined as an argument in sfdep local g, but it can be accessed through the dots. When the object is printed, the difference is quite pronounced. Dots are useful when used by themselves with no special sauce, but it's not the only way that they can be utilized. We can actually capture them. And by capture, I mean make them less ephemeral and capturing them into a data format that is familiar and useful like a list. Capturing dots is actually quite simple. The list function is acting like a Pokeball in this case. 
It captures and tames the wild dots and puts them into a format that we know how to work with. So take this example. We pass in the value world to an argument called hello, and we receive a named list with one element called hello and the value world. But it gets a little bit tricky if we don't have named arguments. And when we don't have named arguments, we return a list without names. Let's look at another use case where we're actually gonna be crafting data frames. We're gonna create a function called data underscore frame. It's a function and it passes in dots. We can define a simple function that captures dots into a list and then passes that list into list to df to create a data frame. We can use it to create a data frame with two columns, x and y. But what happens when we pass in unnamed arguments to dots? It, it works, but that's behavior we don't want. So we can actually expand this a little bit. We've captured our dots and stored them into the list called dots. Now we're gonna extract all the names of those elements in that list and store them into an object called dots names. So, so now we can check that vector dots names. And if any of it is null, or if there's an empty character vector in dots names, we can stop the execution of our function and say, hey, all arguments must be named. And then we can continue on with our work. We pass in two vectors, one through 10, in the first 10 letters of the alphabet, and they don't have any names. So we get the error that we expect. But when we do provide the names of the arguments, our function works. So with the dots, there are also helpers in base R that are fairly useful, but maybe they're good to know and you might find use for them. I haven't yet. The first thing is we can reference the arguments passing to dots via position. So each argument is specified as dot dot one, dot dot two, dot dot three, and so on and so forth for every single argument that's passed in via dots. And let's say we wanna add the first two arguments of dots. We define a new function, we can capture dots, and we'll add dot dot one and dot dot two together. So it's only ever gonna add those first two elements. Let's add three and 1.4 to get pi. Or we can use this dot 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 length function which tells us how many arguments were actually passed in. We can define a function called nargs, which takes one parameter, dots, and then returns the number of parameters that's passed in. So here we provide five arguments, one, two, three, four, and five. Then we get back five, because that's how many arguments were passed in via dots. And we can use this dot, 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 ELT, N. That'll find the nth argument passed in via dots. So let's make a function called first and last. We pass in arguments via dots, and we wanna return the first argument and the last argument. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create a variable called arg1, which always contains the first argument. Then we're gonna capture how many arguments were passed in total via dots. Then we're gonna extract that last argument via the ELT function with the newly defined variable n, and we're gonna assign that to last underscore arg. Lastly, we'll return a list containing the first argument and the last argument. So if we return first argument to NA and infinity, we'll get a list of length two where the first element is first argument, and then the second one is inf. Now warning, unused dots are swallowed. And what does that mean? Well, let's go back to that function add two. We're gonna pass in three arguments, three, 0 0.14, and 10. Well, 10 is ignored, and it's silently. There's no warning, there's no error, there's nothing. It's swallowed. So check your dots. There's a package called Ellipsis from the RLib team, and it is strictly tools for working with dots, or in writing, they're called ellipses. Ellipsis comes with other helpers that we can use too. For example, there's the function check dots empty, which checks to see if any arguments passed into dots are unnamed. Opposite of that, there's check dots unnamed, which ensures that all arguments passed to dots are unnamed because there are some situations where if an argument is captured by dots, it's likely a typo and someone got the argument name wrong. So let's look at this example we had previously. Instead of having our nasty if statement, we can then just say ellipsis check dots empty. And when we pass in values without an argument name, then we get an error. And But wait, there's more, but that's for a later time. So in Arlang, there's this concept of dynamic dots, and I really encourage you to look that up. To recap, dots can pass arguments from one function to another, be collected using a list, they can be sneaky and actually swallow arguments, and you should always check them with the ellipsis package. So what's next? 
that's up to you. Let me know. I've got some ideas stewing and I really just need the motivation to, to do these. So if you tell me what you want, I'll probably do it just for you. So thanks.